Election results for the Junior Safety Council have been posted. Ted and Ruth are pleased to find their names. Their experience on the council last year will be useful in their new jobs. Miss Wilson, the safety sponsor, wants to discuss a plan of action with them. First, she wants them to look at a graph showing how effectively last year's council reduced accidents in the school building by helping the children learn to live together safely. Wouldn't it be splendid if this year's council could do as well, or even better? Miss Wilson's plan is for Ted and Ruth to start their work with an inspection to see what their school has done to make safe living possible. And we're going with them. With Mr. Adams, the school custodian, as our guide, we see first the fire extinguishers placed around the building. Each extinguisher has directions for use and an inspection tag showing it has been recharged within the past year. Fire extinguishers are inspected also by the local fire chief. In various places throughout the school, there are fire alarm boxes. Ruth wants to know how they work. Ted knows and he demonstrates. Do you know how to work the fire alarm boxes in your school? Besides fire extinguishers and alarm boxes, the school provides fire hoses. In an emergency, the glass could be broken. But Mr. Adams unlocks the hose box in order to show Ted and Ruth how to turn on the water and how the fire hose is arranged so it can be pulled out quickly and easily. Of course, fire protection is not the only kind of safety provided by the school. The drinking fountains are safely constructed to reduce the danger of bumping your teeth while you're drinking. And there are no sharp parts of the fountain sticking out in the way of people walking in the hall. Here's another safety feature. The exit doors are equipped with special locks so they can be opened from the inside just by pushing against the bar. So we've seen some of the safety aids built into this school. And Mr. Adams wants Ted and Ruth to inspect the school often and tell him about any unsafe things they might find. When Ted and Ruth tell Miss Wilson about their inspection, she suggests that they make another inspection, this time to find out what the children are doing to live safely in the safe school that is provided for them. But first, let's try to think of some rules that will help the children live safely. Ruth can use the rules keeping her record of the inspection. Certainly one rule is good housekeeping. Ted thinks there should be something about using tools correctly. So Ruth writes another safe living rule. Skillful and correct actions. Can you think of a third rule for safe living? Courtesy. There, those three rules should cover almost everything. So now let's investigate how the children are living safely in school. We can start in the hallway. Uh-oh, someone might slip in that spilled water. Let's see what the girl does about it. That's good. She wipes up the water right away. Don't you think that might be called good housekeeping? Ruth is keeping notes of what we observe. But look here. Ted explains that everyone should keep to the right side of the hall, just as automobiles do on the highway. Let's see now. That sounds like courtesy. There's a safe way to use the drinking fountain, too. See how this boy drinks without touching the fountain itself? His mouth touches only the water. That belongs under skillful and correct actions. And see the line here waiting for the fountain? Everyone in the line is leaving plenty of room for the others. Wouldn't that make a good safety rule? It's part of courtesy too.
At the stairway, we learn a safety rule from a girl who changes her books to her left hand, so her right hand will be free. Can you see why? This goes under skillful and correct actions. Be ready to use the guardrail on the stairs. Now let's visit some of the classrooms. Here's a girl cutting pictures out of a magazine. When she finishes, yes, she does put the scissors away in a box with her pencils and pen. That makes a good rule. That's good housekeeping, don't you think? But look at this boy's feet. Someone might trip over them. Ted suggests that it's just a matter of courtesy to keep your feet out of the aisle. Uh-oh, there goes a crayon. Well, give him credit for picking it up before anyone can slip on it. More good housekeeping safety for Ruth to record. In another classroom, we find a group getting ready to do some construction work. When they move the table, they're careful to leave enough aisle space that no one will have trouble getting out of the room in an emergency. Let's call that skillful and correct actions. And it's good housekeeping to close the drawer of the table. Now let's see if this boy knows the safe way to hold a nail. Here's a skillful and correct action that will help prevent smashed fingers. Fire drill. Everyone knows his part. Keep an orderly line. Teacher at the end. Close the door. Quiet, quick, careful. Blocked entrance. That's using his head. Swing toward an unblocked entrance. The lines move to a safe distance from the building and wait as the teachers call the roll. By knowing the rules and thinking quickly, the students have emptied the building without mishap. Skillful and correct actions have made a successful fire drill. From our investigations, Ted and Ruth have made up a poster of safe living rules. Remember, the school provides safety help such as equipment for fire protection, this is on exit doors, and fixtures designed to prevent accidents. The students can live safely by following three rules. First, good housekeeping. That means wiping up and cleaning up. And putting things away, especially sharp tools. Skillful and correct actions include such things as using tools correctly, touching only the water at the drinking fountain, knowing the rules and thinking for yourself. The final rule is courtesy. Walking on the right side. Keeping your feet out of the aisle. No pushing or crowding and so on. These are the safe living rules that were adopted at one school. They're just as important any school in you. And now, how many more rules can you add?